Ita, a name never used before in Atlantic hurricane naming, in a storm that caused priceless amounts of destruction as it tore through Central America as a Category 4 hurricane. I've already made a video on, like, the impacts of the forecasted impacts in Central America, but the storm had a far bigger history than just that. In fact, its track is probably among the weirdest in Atlantic history. In this video, I recap Ita's bizarre track and impacts, but before we get into that, I'd appreciate if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for future content. Okay, so what happened first? Well, Ida formed in the Central Caribbean Sea on October 31st, and it was um, very, very favorable conditions for development. What favorable conditions, you might ask? Well, warm water, low wind shear, and high amounts of moisture. As the storm drifted west toward the Nicaraguan coast, so it began to rapidly intensify, and within 48 hours, or two days if you're not good at math, it had become a Category 4 hurricane. This made Ida one of the strongest hurricanes to ever form in no during November, and in fact, we might never know just how strong it actually became because there was a lack of data near peak intensity. This kind of rapid intensification has happened once before in the season, uh, when Hurricane Delta explosively intensified in a similar area and environment. In the late afternoon of November 2nd, Ida made landfall just 15 miles, or 25 kilometers, south of Puerto Cabezas, Nicaragua, as a 150 mile per hour storm. What followed was something that could be described as a scene of destruction. Near the site of landfall, the high, wind, the high winds caused extensive damage to Puerto Cabezas and other nearby cities. Further inland, Ida quickly weakened, but its heavy rains caused deadly mudslides across Nicaragua, Honduras, Guatemala, and Mexico. Ida lingered over Central America for three whole days, dropping multiple feet of rain in the process. Eventually, it reemerged over the Northwest Caribbean and quickly reorganized over the warm water. Uh, this time, however, dry air and increased wind shear kept a lid on its intensification as it moved northeast and eventually made landfall in central Cuba. From there, Ida continued to move north and then northwest, making landfall on Matcombe Key, Florida, on November 8th as a tropical storm. This is where the track gets really strange. Uh, Ida started to move back toward the southwest, uh, eventually restrengthening into a hurricane off the coast of northwestern Cuba. Then, Ida started to move back northeast, uh, essentially retracing its path until it moved into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. There, Ida weakened into a tropical storm again before making a final landfall north of Tampa, Florida, on November 11th. 24 hours later, Ida completely dissipated off the coast of South Carolina, thus ending its deadly and bizarre story. And with that, that wraps up this quote-unquote history lesson on Hurricane Ida. If you guys like this video, then I might do some more hurricane stories for other storms in 2020 and even past hurricane seasons. But that's only if you like it. As always, I would appreciate it if you liked the video, subscribe to your channel, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for future content. Thanks and have a great day.